philosophical point of order. You pretty much get to choose to the extent that you want to look at the real world scientifically, whether you go are going to observe or judge, whether you are going to see how things are or be offended by that. You don't really get to do them both at the exact same time. And the reason I know this is not just because I'm like working with mindfulness stuff or dealing with politics or accepting the fact that I used to be way more radical left and now I'm way more skeptical of the radical left. I never agreed with them perfectly, but I'm certainly not like a centrist or over to the right or some kind of classical liberal at this point, but that I still keep waking up from all the sides. And I saw like the, I saw Larry Elder convincing Dave Rubin in real time that there's no more systemic racism. And I was just now talking to my friend and her and I were like waking up together to the fact that it's like, dude, you just got to look at the neighborhoods and the prison system. Like if you were an alien anthropologist, you'd be like, yeah, this, that's a racist society. Like that there are these things that are, you just keep waking up and waking up and waking up. And then I was just having an argument with my roommate and I wasn't seeing him for who he was and then recognizing these little things. And think about it, what it's like in your relationships, what it's like with that, with that ex that you used to fight with all that time or that current partner that you fight with all the time. Like they are playing the power games. They are doing all the things that you think they're doing, but you have a choice. You can either observe it or you can be offended by it. And you don't get to do both. To the degree that you're just offended, you're not really observing. And to the degree that you're really observing, you won't be offended. I mean, I'm not saying that both are absolutely impossible. I'm saying that for me, okay, I'm looking at how just how he, for example, he, he uses his ability to go on and on in an explanation as a power game. So the degree to which he's going to talk forever and irritate me with extremely long answers to any questions I might make the mistake of asking him is going to be related to how frustrated he is with me in general, because it's an emotional game. And that's his little, that's his little game. That's how he does it. That's one of his little power tools is he's very easily offended over being interrupted, but he himself can talk so long that the only way that you're ever going to get a word in edgewise is literally edgewise by interrupting. So that's a power game. Okay. Well, what am I doing wrong here? I'm preventing myself from observing him with love and dispassionate compassion, if such a paradox is possible, by being so judgmental, by being hurt, by taking it personally. You're never going to see the political climate or your personal climate for what they are, as long as you're busy trying to figure out whose side you're on or what pisses you off more. There's always going to be that bias. That's true. Can humans ever reason unemotionally? No. Even Noam Chomsky, the most alien reasoning mechanism I've ever found in a human, is still reasoning emotionally. And I'm sure he'd be the first to tell you that there is absolutely no, no such thing as dispassionate reasoning. There is no logic without emotionality. At the very least, it chooses which forms of logic we, we look at and you could get into the philosophical detail, but I think everyone more or less accepts that that's the picture. Anyone who's ever really thought about philosophy knows that like there is no unemotional reasoning. So is that possible? No. That's why I say you pretty much get to look at situations with love or you're going to look at them incorrectly. Like, and that's for me correcting toward love. Maybe for you, if you're already good at looking situations with love, and you tend to be too compassionate to see the truth, and maybe that's the feedback that you've been getting a lot from people, it's like, dude, you just won't face the negative truth. Okay, so maybe maybe for you, you need the opposite corrections. Like, maybe you need to learn how to step back from your love and look at things. For me, it's stepping back from my hate, basically, and looking at things and being like, okay, I can either observe how this guy reacts and make rational choices about how to set boundaries with him, but... I cannot observe him playing his little games and judge them at the same time. Because if I'm judging them, then I'm going to react. I'm just going to start interrupting him because I'm offended. Whereas if I step back and observe, God forbid, maybe with love, it'll be like, oh, oh, I see. He's talking at length and over explaining might even be an indication that I've been frustrating him a little bit 
if I sense that he's using it as a power thing. And even if he's not, maybe it's like an indication that he's feeling disempowered. In any case, I don't have to sit here and listen and make a victim out of myself. Maybe I can give him a hug, you know? And luckily with him, that's an option. I know with a lot of people like say your boss at work, it's not gonna be. So all the more important to be able to take that radical step back so you can make those radically rational choices that serve you and hopefully don't hurt the other person if unless, I mean, as long as not necessary and get you more of what you want without you reacting so emotionally, which tends to get you in trouble, right? So, was that a projection? Absolutely.